This week, I came across a video by Chris Power where he shows how to solve the problem of checking if a string is balanced or not, meaning that all like parentheses and square brackets are, are, are matching up in a string. And when he showed this, he, he kind of wrote the whole implementation and then ran a bunch of test cases on that implementation to check that it was correct. And I was interested to see how solving this problem would look like if done in test-driven development style. So in doing the implementation incrementally and writing tests along the way. So that's what I'm attempting in this video. And at the end, you will also get a bonus how to solve this problem in a different way. So stick around for that. At the top here, we have an almost empty Python file, which defines the skeleton. So here is the function to run the tests. And here is the empty is balanced function that we're going to implement. And down here at the bottom, we are running the test so we can see the output. So let's get started. So the first thing I want to test for this is balanced is all the unwanted characters. So I'm going to say something like um, So if our string doesn't contain any braces at all, all braces are matched because there are no. Um, so that's the first case. So let's just return true for that to make that pe test pass. So next thing I want to do is to actually add some brace to get uh, a different response here. So that must be a failure case, right? Uh, so let's say So this example can be, for example, when we have an open paren and not closing it. So we should get false. So in true TDD style, let's just fake this one to make it pass. And now maybe we can think about refactoring this. So this is obviously not the correct implementation. So what we want to do is to go through each character in a string and do something depending on what the character is. So let's see if we can refactor this towards some kind of loop instead. So let's just do for character in a string if uh, character is this thing then return false. Let's see if that works. So this is a little bit more correct implementation. Um, we, we have refactored towards something more real, still having uh, this test as a security net so we don't make any bad changes. So let's see if we can add another case, uh, an example where things are balanced. Uh, so let's see. That would be the simplest example, I think. So, how are we going to do this? Uh, when we encounter an opening paren, we just return false, so we can obviously not do that. So let's instead count the open parens. So open count zero. When we encounter an open paren, we increment that number and return open count is zero. So if the open count is zero, we have no open parentheses, and that means the string is balanced. 
uh, this still fails for this new example but now we can add a case saying else if the character is a closing paren then let's decrement the open count because that means we have closed the previously open paren okay so when i'm looking at this implementation uh, i'm wondering what happens when we do a closing paren and then an open paren. So I'm just gonna see, I'm gonna write the test with no assertion and just do this and see what happens. So this gives true back. And I don't think this is correct because this string doesn't look balanced to me because we have the closing paren before the opening paren. Um, so let's add the assertion up there and let's see if we can fix it um, and I believe the fix is down here in the closing so here we want to check if the open count is larger than zero then we can decrement otherwise just return false because this means we're trying to close something which was never open and then we don't need to check further in the string if we encounter such a case and then we know that the string is not balanced okay do we have any more cases so now just for fun we can just make a more complicated string here and make sure that it still passes seems to pass all right so this implementation seems to work fine um, and we can also add another case maybe I don't know let's close and open like that should still fail right so this seems to work so the next thing we want to do is to allow more kinds of brace characters. This implementation now only works for parentheses and we also want it to work for for like square brackets and squiggly brackets. Uh, so let's see which test case we want to add for that. Uh, so let's first um, add a case for um, Oops, let's just do this. So saying that if, if a squiggle brace is not closed, uh, the string is also not balanced. So we can fix that by saying, uh, if the character is a squiggly brace, then we also increment the open count. That will get that, that pass to pass. Um, and obviously this implementation is now just adding more if cases and want to generalize that but I want to go a bit further with this implementation before doing that refactoring uh, so let's see we can also add the same case with the unbalanced that should not work and it doesn't because we're not counting this one anyway uh, well let's keep that test case in there and we want to check for balance with uh, by adding a balance squiggly pair here as well and that doesn't work so we can add another case for closing squiggly and just say hope the count decrement and now we're getting a failure in this case, uh, which was the same thing we had before when we open and close in the incorrect order. Uh, so we can just steal all this code uh, and yeah, do it like that. So now this uh, implementation also works for squiggle braces, or does it? How about the combination? What if we do something like this? I believe this will now pass, 
but it shouldn't really pass because here we are not closing the corresponding brace uh, so this should be false it is true and that's because our implementation is only counting the number of opening braces and when we close a brace at this location we don't check that it's a matching brace so for example when we're closing the parentheses here we're not checking that the last thing that was open was an open paren we're just decrementing the count um, so we need to fix that to be able to make this test pass so I'm gonna comment out this test so that we're back to all passing test and then I'm going to refactor this implementation uh, towards something that can support that checking so instead of keeping a count here uh, we will keep a stack of all the open parentheses um, or all the open braces uh, so let's say open stack is empty uh, when we encounter an opening uh, parenthesis, we append that to the stack. And when we encounter an opening squiggly brace, we append that to the stack as well. Uh, decrementing means popping the last element of the stack. Same thing here. And down here, we can then return if the length of the open stack is zero. It's the same thing as asserting that the open count is zero. So that works. So now we can remove all this old code. Almost, let's see. Here we're checking if open count, so this should really be open count, it's really the length of the open stack. See that works right. That works, and now I can remove all open count like that, right? Uh, so let's see. Now we have a stack-based implementation instead. We're still popping no matter what. Um, I'm thinking if I want to do some more refactoring on this implementation before trying to enabling this test again um, so let's see um, let's just go for this test so the problem here is when we come to this character when we encounter the closing parenthesis right here uh, we are popping the stack no matter what so we want to add a case here saying if the length of open stack is larger than zero and open stack if the top of the stack is a opening parenthesis right uh, and obviously the same thing uh, must be done here so let's see if we can add a test case for that which is failing so can we do something like this hmm uh, what test case can we add to force us to write the implementation here what if we just do this ha when we come to the second character it will pop uh, I guess we can simplify this to to this as well when we're closing the incorrect parentheses yeah Okay, so let's add the same thing here. Oops, uh, added in the wrong place. Let's see, it should go here. 
There we go. So let's have a look at our tests. So a string with no braces is balanced. A string with a non-closing brace. Close braces unbalanced. And here we can say something like uh, something like that. And we can add more cases just for fun to make this a bit more interesting all right so implementation now seems to work and we have a pretty good test coverage and the tests helped us uh, flesh out the implementation and and give a safety net for factorings so now comes the fun part i think uh, when we have a good set of test cases to make sure that this works and to refactor this to something uh, more beautiful. So there are a lot of uh, if cases here and a lot of repetitive code. So I want to see if I can um, try to refactor this to something else. Uh, so I wanted to find up here all the valid braces that we have uh, in a map and see if we can utilize that one instead. Uh, so let's call it pairs, maybe. Uh, and let's see, we have this one mapping to this one. And maybe I want to do this in the other order, because that will make it a bit easier. Uh, we'll see later on. So let's have all the pairs uh, in a dictionary. Uh, and this can then be if the character is an opening, which is the same as saying if character in pairs dot values, then we append it to the stack and we can remove this case. Uh, otherwise, let's see if the character is in Keys. then we can say so yeah here is if it's an if it's a closing character then we want to see if the top of the stack is the corresponding open character and the corresponding open character we can look up to the closing character like this and I believe we can now remove this one and this one. All right. Uh, so now we got rid of all the multiple if cases. And if we want to add other parts, we can just do it up here. But I want to do one last refactoring to make this code read even better. So I want to create a class for pairs. And let's initialize it with the same thing that we did uh, uh, in the example above. So let's just do this. Oh, maybe we can sure. Let's do this. So I want to make pairs like this instead. And maybe we can make this work by just inherit from the dictionary. Let's see if that works. Yeah, that works. Okay. So now uh, I want to add some functions to describe what we're doing here. So one is saying, um, I want to check if something is an opening. So is open. And with this particular implementation of Paris, uh, we return if the character is in uh, dot values, right? Uh, so now we can say if 
pairs is open. Uh, no, pairs is not defined. Uh, this should just be self. Right? And the closing, you can do the same for that. And those are the keys. And we can say the closing. And then I want to add a last one for is matching. So open. Closing opening. Let's call it that to not make it uh, conflict with the built in. Uh, and then we want to say uh, return. So we look up the opening. So if self closing is opening. And then here we can say if pairs is matching opening with closing um, yeah and <clears throat> on second thought I don't want to make this addict I said I want it initialize it something like this so giving it a list uh, with pairs something like this so we don't expose the implementation uh, that the pairs is using dict so let's do something like that and then initialize it create a map And here we want to do the self dot map instead. Tuple is not callable. Uh, there we go. Uh, so now this reads pretty okay. If the character is an open character, then we append it to the stack. If it's a closing character, we check if... Uh, we can also do this check, we can just do open stack. If the open stack contains something. And the last thing added to the stack is matching what we have now. Let me pop it, otherwise rest return false. Yeah, so this refactoring was quite easy to do when we had the safety net with all the tests we can make sure that this is still working next i want to show you a different implementation of this is balance that i've done in earl meta so let's have a look so earl meta is a programming language uh, that you can use to describe other programming languages languages what they look like so you can make parsers and tree tra transformers and stuff like that so this defines sort of a grammar describing how strings in this language looks like um, so strings in this language are all the strings that are balanced meaning that all the parentheses uh, match up uh, so a string here is defined as any number of items followed by the empty string. So this means match a position uh, which is not anything, which means there's nothing left. So an item is either an opening parenthesis followed by any number of items followed by a closing parenthesis, or same thing with the squiggle brace 
or it's not a brace character, it's something else uh, that we just ignore. Uh, and a brace uh, is defined to be any of these four brace characters. So this is really straightforward to express in RL meta. This is a bit more not as uh, convenient to do in RL meta because you have to list explicitly all the characters which are not allowed. Whereas in this case right here, in the Python implementation, we just didn't do anything for else because we checked, is it an open, isn't it closing? Otherwise we just ignore it. But here we have to explicitly list all the characters uh, which are allowed to exist that are not brace characters. This is not uh, as much of a problem in our meta because in general you want to do something uh, with the other characters. The other characters might have structure to them as well. So if you're thinking that we're the string is part of a programming language, you can't just type any characters outside the braces, you have to do something else as well. Um, so usually item here might be like a, like a function type declaration thingy instead of just random stuff. Uh, but anyway, I, I wanna show you how this works in the test. So here we can import this, uh, from balanced RL meta, we can import the balanced. I think that works. Uh, from, and then we can do create a new instance of balanced and run the string on the string, right? So this means invoke the string rule, this rule, and give it uh, the string as an input. Uh, and we get a match error on some example, on this example, meaning that we failed to parse this string to be uh, to be in this language. So what, what we want to do here is to add, to make it match this interface. And here we want to do return false, and here we want to do return true. So if the parsing was successful, it means that it was balanced, it was part of this language, we return true, otherwise we return false if we get a match error. And we also need to import a match error. All right, there we go. Thanks, Chris, for inspiring me to make this video, and I'll see you in one week.